everyone and welcome back to the vlog. I'm so sorry I haven't posted for a couple of weeks. I've been taking some time out, haven't been very well. I'm okay now, I'm back to it, getting stuck in and here we go. Today's video I wanted to do for somebody who requested a little bit more information about health promotion. And what a great video because this is my job as a GP nurse. So I first came into contact with health promotion, just like this person as well. Uh, during my excess course, we had a health promotion module. Uh, we had to set up a stall in the middle of the atrium of the college and create this health promotion event. Uh, our one was based around alcohol awareness. Um, so we had loads of different posters. We had giant Jenga and you had to play Jenga with beer goggles on and stuff like that. It was really, really fun. But before then, I didn't know much about health promotion as such. But basically what you're doing when you're doing your health promotion spiel at work or as a student, wherever you are, you're trying to get the person to be healthier, to make some healthier choices in their life, to be able to live a long and healthy life ahead of them. And that's really not going to work if you're going to sit there going, you need to stop smoking because it's bad for you. So it's really important that the way that we do our health promotion is going to meet the person's needs and what they need and how they're thinking. And we're all different. We're all individual people. So it's, it's really hard to sort of get it right for everybody. So it's really important that you adjust your body language, you adjust your, your tone of voice, you adjust the way you say things depending on the person in front of you. And this is something you do get used to when you keep going over it and meeting different people and doing it. You do get into a routine and you do get into a flow of doing things and you do get used to your patients, especially in general practice. Like we see our patients time and time again. So they get used to you and you get used to them. So it, it is really nice. And to be honest, it does become a little bit easier as you go. But you will always have that one patient. We've all had that one patient. It doesn't matter what you do, what you say. They don't want to change. They don't want to change their behaviours. They don't want to live a long, happy life. I literally had someone say to me, I don't care. I'm going to die anyway. May as well die happy. And I said, that's fine. That's your decision. That's your decision. I can just give you all of the information and all of the health promotion and all the leaflets in the world. But if you're not going to take that on board, then that's absolutely your choice. Document it. Done. Do not take the burden of all of their health on your shoulders because at the end of the day, the person has to work with you. They, you. The best you can do is give all of the information. Try and make change where you can. If you can't, then that's up to the person. So one tip for health promotion is ask open-ended questions. Don't ask closed off questions. So you want to say, okay, so why do you smoke? And they'll say, yeah, I enjoy it. I'll, they'll give you all their reasons for why they smoke still. And then you delve a little bit deeper. So you could say things like, okay, but why is that? And then you delve a little bit deeper and you say, have you ever thought about what a smoke-free life would look like? See, plant the seed, get them thinking, think, oh, what would my life be like without smoking? How much money would I save? What could I do with all that money that I'm saving? How healthier would I feel without smoking? What about the people around me? What would they think? And it starts to get those wheels in motion just to get them thinking about their health. And this is the sort of thing that I learned recently, actually, it, during a motivational interviewing uh, training session. And it was just trying to input these little questions and little bits into people's minds to get them thinking about it, getting to think about change in their lives, but getting them to make that decision for themselves rather than you telling them to. And sometimes when people start to open up and talk to you, you'll find that there's deeper reasonings and deeper meanings that maybe might be above your expertise where you then have to refer on to maybe uh, mental health teams, for example, or smoking cessation, the doctors, things like that. And that's OK. You know, you can't know everything. You can't help everybody. Um, you're not their saviours. But as long as you put in place these little things to refer them on and get them the help that they do need, that's all you can do. So in my role as a GP nurse, it is my job to health promote. It is our job to hopefully prevent that hospital admission at the end of the day. So we've got asthma, we've got COPD, we've got um, diabetes management, we've got hypertension. You know, we want to stop those heart attacks from happening. We want to stop those blood clots from happening. Um, and as part of that sort of process, we uh, now do the NHS health checks and these begin when you are 40 years old. And these are to help make people aware of things, but also to help pick up anything that might be going on. Is someone's cholesterol a bit borderline? Is it a bit high? Have they got an irregular pulse rate, for example? Something that's never been picked up on before so that we get it and we prevent anything from happening to them whilst they're okay and they're walking into your clinic. 
And that is my biggest part of health promotion is during that time. So I'm telling them about the benefits of exercise, the benefits of eating better, making little tiny changes, switching from one oil to another oil, cutting out high fats, um, high saturates, high dairy products, things like that, and making these simple little changes in their life to get that level down if they've got a high cholesterol, for example. Um, same with diabetes, like learning about carb management and sizes, switching portions and things like that. Um, eating less sugar as well, obviously, because it's diabetes. Um, and just these little things that they can look out for symptoms wise as well to help manage their diabetes. But in my role, I'm the respiratory nurse for our clinic. So I do that a lot of asthma and COPD. So mine is very much smoke and cessation um i'm not trained in smoke and cessation but i do try and give as much health promotion as i can and trying to get them to cut down or cut back or stop smoking if they can especially with copd because it's just going to affect the lungs more and more and more and cause more damage um so as part of my role is a little bit of health promotion with the smoking side of things and things like that as well and doing things like lung exercises breathing exercises which is hopefully going to help their lungs and another thing that some of you know I'm really passionate about is sexual health, contraception, women's health, transgender health. I love all of that sort of thing. So I'm really passionate about that. So when I get people in for their cervical screening, for example, oh, I love it. And I love just talking to them about it. And I love promoting breast health as well. So some people don't know how to check their breasts. So I do all of that now. And I've got extra leaflets as well that's going to help them do that. And I just love talking about that sort of thing. That is where my like main experience lies and my passion and health promotion and getting people to take better care of their own health is a massive part of the nhs long-term plan at the minute as some of you are aware we are under massive strain at the minute the nhs we haven't got enough staff we've got way too many patients uh we've got things like obesity and long-term conditions that are rising uh, then we've got covid impacting on top of that there's quite a lot so the more health promotion and prevention that we can do now uh the better the impact on the health services later on in life so it but again like i said it's up to the patient as well it's not just up to us the patients are going to do whatever they want to do at the end of the day we can only do our best and, and hopefully our best is going to make a difference to someone's life and health promotion can come in a variety of forms. It could be verbally. So whilst I'm sitting talking to my patient, I will do it. There's plenty of leaflets on the NHS websites, on the specific um, long-term condition management websites as well, on smoking websites, alcohol awareness websites, all of that. They've got some really good resources that you can give to your patients. You can download, print them out. Uh, where I work, we have a text messaging service. So sometimes I'll text patients all of the guidelines and uh, leaflets and things like that that they can use. They can print off at home if they want to, but they've got it on their smartphone ready to use if they need it. We have visual aids. So we'll have posters and things like that up in surgeries for people to look at. And hopefully it's that subliminal sort of message that they pass as they walk into the waiting room and they think, oh, yeah. I have thought about stop smoking. I'm just using smoking because that's the easiest one to look look at. Or a Weight Watchers program. Like NHS, we do free, 12 weeks free Weight Watchers programs. Um, so people might see that in the waiting room and think, oh, I've been looking at something like that and this is free. So it sort of entices them in a little bit by little by little. But just th there's so many different ways of doing health promotion. Uh, another one is uh, events as well. So creating like we did for our access course, we created an event in our atrium to create a bit more awareness around it. Awareness days, using making use of the awareness days as well. If you go on the awarenessdays.com, I think it is, I'll put the link here. It will show you all the different health promotion events that are, are going on. Things like the cervical screen and awareness week that was a couple of weeks ago. It's really good to get that health promotion out there as well. Get it on the news get it on social media and just spread the message and hopefully these little tiny things will eventually sink in and just make people think about their own health and creating better lifestyle for themselves However, one of the biggest problems I think that we have is things are costly. Like if you go out and you're, you want to buy some vegetables, some fruits, it's really expensive compared to going to Mackey D's where you can get a happy meal for £2.99, £3, whatever it is now. Um, and that's a meal. And then you go and buy salad and fruits and things like that. The price goes up and then it runs out of date as well really fast. That's what I've found anyway when I put it in the fridge. And then after a few days, it's not very good anymore. 
Maybe it just depends where you get it from. I don't know. But so then you're just wasting food as well. So I think that's a massive problem as well to consider if you're thinking about health promotion is cost of things. The things like in inequalities in healthcare you know rich people can afford to eat well if they want to but someone like me like I've come from a really poor background a salad was a treat for us um you know we would have a lot of frozen foods fried foods chips things like that no wonder there was cardiovascular disease in our family and every now and then it'd be like a, a treat like oh should we have a really nice ham and egg salad or something like that and it'd be like oh yeah I really fancy that we go out we buy all these nice salads and things to put in the salad because it is expensive same with gym and memberships and things like that it's really expensive weight watchers programs slimming world all these sort of different things that people want to do they can't do because they haven't got the money for it is a really massive massive problem i think in healthcare services and in the population and also people out living in the sticks in the rural, rural sort of areas they're not going to have access to these things like fancy gyms and slimming world and weight watchers they might not have any transport to get to places so it's how we target these people as well that really matters with health promotion not only that but people can easily access youtube and things like that now which is great if you've got the internet but a lot of people again don't can't afford the internet they haven't got laptops they haven't got technology to make use of youtube yoga or some Something like that it's it's really hard for some people and it's really hard to sort of when you're trying to do your health promotion and things like that to to manage that sort of thing and that's probably one of the the downsides to health promotion is is trying to get it right for everybody because sometimes you just can't but there are also a lot of charities and a lot of food bank services and things like that that go out and provide sort of meals for people. There's so much that going on out there that you just don't think about. So my next tip is have a little research around and see what sort of charities there are, see what sort of campaigns there are around your area that you can include in your health promotion that might help someone that's like that, that's got this massive health inequality. And one campaign that I've seen recently is, um, I can't remember what it's called. It's like the healthcare bus or something, but it's a bus that goes around. It's got nurses and healthcare professionals that goes around to those rural populations that can't get into their GP practice. So they're going to provide a service in a bus out there. I just thought this was amazing. I haven't looked into it hundred percent properly, but I'm going to find the link for you. I'm going to put it in the description below because it is amazing. And that'd be really, really good to include again in your health promotion stuff if that's what you're doing at the minute uh, but if you're not and you're just watching this for information have a look at it because it is an amazing idea and uh, there is funding as well actually out there um, through different places like uh, the Florence Nightingale Foundation, the Burdett Trust, things like that. They they set up uh, scholarships for people to do these little projects. Um, so there is some little money pots and charities and things like that that you can sort of pull from if you would like to set up something like this in your area it would be incredible and please let me know below if you've set up something like this if there's something going on in your area that um i might not have seen out there please comment below because i love looking at this stuff and i love seeing what's going out there it makes my day so that's just a little bit of food for thought for you like we always think about health promotion is this really good thing like oh my god i'm gonna do this health promotion i'm gonna save lives i'm gonna make a change but actually it's not always like that it's very much down to costs it's down to money what can people afford how feasible are things for these these patients how are they going to get to places it's quite a lot and i think that's really good if you're doing a health promotion topic or uh, a presentation or an event or something like that it's really good to put all these discussions in there because that's your critical analysis then as well for it your pros your cons and what's going well but what's actually going wrong and how can we improve that but yeah i think that's it from me uh i can't think of anything else to cover on health promotion i feel like I've, I've talked about health promotion a lot um and i don't want to bore you to death but if there's anything else i haven't covered that you want to know more about comment below i will get back to you um, and help you out but for now goodbye and see you next time <laughs>